Scheduling can be a formidable source of agency and freedom for you and your team, or it can be a constant source of dread and conflict. Mastering a schedule that works for your business and your team in this day and age really requires you to accommodate the individual needs of everyone who works with you, which can be really challenging. Hello and welcome to another episode of Digital Marketing Made Simple. I'm your host, Jenny Lyon, and today I wanted to show several approaches to scheduling that you can use to ease the strain of accommodating individuals within your business and keep everyone happy and the lights on. Let's jump into it. In this modern age, the people that you employ cannot be reasonably expected to vote, devote time beyond their workday to your business, right? This is something I hear all the time. And to be honest, it really wasn't fair, you know, back in the 80s either. And it's never been something that's been acceptable to me. And what you must do as an employer or as a leader of your team is really ensure that the time that your team is spending at work can be spent focused on the most important projects at hand. And how can you do that? By flexing to the best of your ability so that the imminent needs of your team are met. And how on earth can you possibly do that, right? Well, you want to make sure that you're enabling your team's flexibility and they need to organize their schedules to suit their needs. It's just how it is these days. And when you empower your team to make the best decision for them as how to plan and carve out their workday, you really allow them to flex their integrity. And when you place that power and responsibility on your team's shoulders, then they will prioritize their workload beside their family and their personal commitments and really set themselves up for success. So you really don't want to be scared to trust your team with that level of control. And to be honest, it's also a quick way to see which of your team members really shine when weighted with real responsibility and which ones will falter under it. And discussions and meetings, those are really inevitable, but they're not the be all end all for solid communication or team building or even project and task management. So absent parties, can really catch up with you in other ways, right? So for instance, my team. My team is quite large and I have team members that work, you know, across time zones. You know, I have, for example, my Facebook ads manager is in the UK, right? And, you know, I have project managers that are in my time zone, but there might be other people that are on my team who are specialists in the areas that they work in that aren't in my time zone. So I really want to work with my team the best way possible because these team members are very, very valuable to me and I love working with them, but I need to understand that, you know, they're not always going to be available during my typical nine to five. So I found ways to work within that. So as I said, absent parties can really catch up with, you know, what's happening via meeting agendas or even can defer to colleagues, you know, upon, you know, what upcoming decisions, you know, must be made. And if your business really requires that hands-on meeting in a really regular way, then it really is essential to untether absence from those meetings to lack of interest or integrity or competence. You know, life does not run on employers' clocks anymore. It just doesn't, you know, kids have to be picked up from school. Families work multiple jobs, you know, to make the same amount of money, you know, counting for inflation. And then a lot of families have a single breadwinner, you know, and, you know, that single breadwinner years ago used to be able to, you know, carry their entire family. You know, my husband did that when we were first married. He was the breadwinner while I raised my son even up to a certain point. And then, you know, then I came into the back into the workforce as well. But, you know, a lot of times that's not you know, something that's viable these days. And most, you know, families need two breadwinners. So you really want to be creative and understanding when things need to shift. You know, maybe you're going to have your meetings completely online or you're going to use chat logs. I feel that in my 20 years of doing this and working 
with a completely virtual team during that time, the more accommodating that I've been with my workforce, the more present that they are when they're here with me. So I think it's really important to consider that. So working nine to five is so 1980, which cracks me up because my husband and I went and saw the play nine to five not too long ago. But if you let your night owls work late and sleep in, then maybe you can let your parents of say a sports kid flex their days off around the kids' games. You can know you can let your team who would prefer not to commute to work from home if you have employees that come in. And there's really no valid reason to keep up the appearances of that functioning workplace by forcing everyone to be at their desks, you know, in an office downtown at a certain time of day, you know, wasting really that national average of an hour every day just getting to and from work. And really that comes down to being a full hour lost, right? To those rigid ideas of being productive in the workplace. You know, what difference does it make to productivity in your workplace? You know, if someone would rather work, you know, five, eight hour shifts, great. Or four, 10 hour shifts. You know, it doesn't really matter how the time is split as long as the work is getting done, you know? So I have a lot of team members who will split their work into chunks, you know, and they work, you know, four, you know, four tens or they'll work five eights or, you know, four twos, you know, whatever that is. I really think that it's important to respect when people are off the clock. So that's really important to us. Even though we're a virtual team, we stay in very close contact with each other and we have a way to know, you know, who's working when and, you know, we honor that. So, you know, in these days, you're really connected 24 seven. It's crazy. I mean, I know it because, you know, I own a business, so I get texts all the time. You know, I have to silence my phone when I go to bed because I will get texts in the middle of the night. And when you chase your team with questions that can really wait until tomorrow, then you're cutting into their time and really stunting their recovery from their workday. So you want to make sure that you're showing your team that their time is sacred and respected, just as yours is, right? And that you can expect that same respect during your time off. So people with integrity naturally want to bring their best to work, right? And really deserve the chance to recoup um, free from that work stress during their off hours. You know, I never want to hound my team after they've clocked out, you know, and especially not for non-essential work-related needs, right? I feel like that is one of the quickest way to lose talent, you know, and they'll go somewhere else, right? I really want to make sure that their time is respected. So here's my challenge for you. This one might be a tough one for you guys, but take a look at your workday. Whether you are a solopreneur and you're the only person working in your business or you have a dozen people on your team, sit down and look at how you structure your typical work week and use the magic wand approach, right? If you could wave a magic wand, what would your ideal work week look like? I think you'll be really surprised at how many parts of your schedule occur regularly every single week simply because that's how you've always done it. And you've really never taken the time to stop and have an honest look at whether, could it be changed? Could it maybe be changed to suit you in a better way? You know, are there personal joys, errands, or relationships that you are constantly pushing to the side to accommodate your work schedule? I am guilty of this 100%. It took me a long, long time to learn this lesson. So I hope you will heed my words and not do what I did for probably the first 10 years into my business where I worked constantly, 16 hour days, late nights, early mornings, weekends, vacations. I, I did not take time off. I was in business building mode and it, I lived, I breathed and I ate it. I mean, I just did. And what would your schedule look like if you allowed yourself to work around those things and those people that are so important to you that you keep pushing aside? Don't do it. I'm telling you, my only child is now 21 years old. 
and getting ready to leave for grad school. So I think back to all those long nights and, you know, days and, you know, luckily my husband was able to help me balance it a lot, which was great. So the times when I couldn't be there, he definitely was, but it's still one of those things that I look back and go, darn it, you know, I wish I wouldn't have always worked so hard. All right, so what did we learn today? Well, I think first things first, rigid schedules are really a source of unnecessary workforce stress. I really, really do feel that empowering your team to make their own schedules really does improve productivity during the workday. And you want to take advantage of that digital connectivity that we all have, you know, but only when your team is actually working. And in-person meetings, you know, those rarely are to the benefit of your team. So consider other options and really just be open-minded. Take a look at your schedule and see, you know, what can you possibly, you know, cut out? And of course, my team and I, you know, we are very, very passionate about helping, you know, small business owners and entrepreneurs with all of these things because this is what we do. You know, we help businesses really build from the ground up. We help businesses who are built grow and scale and everything in between. So if you have any questions at all, or if you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know what? I don't wanna work 16 hour days anymore. Maybe I should hand off some of these recurring tasks that I'm doing every single day. You know, content, social media, emails, you know, editing, whatever it is. Or maybe you have some bigger projects that are on your list that you just don't have time to get to, but you really want to make those things happen. That could be a reason to reach out as well. But either way, whatever that reason is, if you're looking to take your business to the next level, reach out, please set up a free call. I'm always happy to answer any questions that you have. You can do so at jennylion.com forward slash chat. And I also have a really great workbook that can help you kind of look and see, hmm, are there tasks or projects that I could hand off to a virtual team? This workbook can help you with that. You can grab that at jennylion.com forward slash VA team. All right. Well, that's what I have for you this week on this episode of Digital Marketing Made Simple. I hope that this sets you up to improve the productivity of your week, and I'll see you next time. See you soon.